when you look out there at the stars, I'm really confused by what's going on because I think there is for sure thousands, if not millions of advanced alien civilizations out there. I'm really confused why we have not in a definitive way met any of them. Uh, so again, continuing the pothead questions, what uh, energy source do you think they're using? If what I'm saying is true, that there is alien civilizations out there, do you think it's like pretty certain that they, in order to expand out into the cosmos, they would be using nuclear fusion? It's hard to imagine anything else. That right now, what, where does energy in the universe come from? And it comes from fusion. It comes from stars. Um, and and we, we know that that's the process. And so whether they're harnessing the star itself, Kardashev type two, or are they bringing fusion along because they want to go somewhere and they're bringing it with them to go visit? Um, I think that that's that that's pretty um, that's pretty likely. Uh, you bring up the Fermi paradox. Mm -hmm. How come we don't see alien civilizations, um, even if it's infinitesimally small chance that there is life on any one planet, and infinitesimally small that life uh, grows into intelligent life? There are, however, almost infinite planets around infinite stars in our galaxy that have been around for vastly longer than we've been around, but we don't see it. And I think that's a question that many scientists and, and everyone has wrestled with over the years. I mean, I'm very scared by the implications of mm. that. The scary thing is that, to the point that we made earlier, as we become more and more technologically advanced, we end up destroying ourselves. Like there could be things we unlock, like nuclear weapons, but plus plus, mm. like new things that happen as you develop super advanced systems that close to 100% probability uh, destroy ourselves, destroy any intelligent being. The kind of intelligent being that's ambitious enough to keep innovating will eventually destroy itself, will be one explanation. And that's scary. And that, that should be a sobering, that's at least an inspiring, sobering thought to be careful with the stuff we create. Um, but I also just look at humans. We create dangerous stuff mm -hmm. and then figure out, like sometimes almost like last minute, how to not destroy ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're good with deadlines. <laughs> we're good with deadlines. I and we're good that. at like surviving. I mean, life as we know it on earth seems to find a way. And intelligent life as we know it, human life, seems to find a way. We do a lot of painful things along the way, but in the end, we somehow survive. It's interesting. There's something in the human spirit mm -hmm. that allows us to survive. So, so I have like a lot of optimism about the super powerful technologies that we create will eventually lead to us still surviving for thousands of years. But then like, why are the aliens not here though? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe it's also possible that it's really difficult to traverse space. Maybe it really is that difficult. The physics makes it not easy. There's a lot of space and it's just hard to, hard to travel. I think um, I, as I have gone further and further and building fusion systems that work, um, I've become more optimistic around the Fermi paradox specifically. And there's, there is the, uh, there's several of them. The, I think you're referring to something called the great filter. It's, something happens that filters out life. Um, the dark forest is another philosophy around, sure, it's out there, but everybody's hiding because they want, don't want to be noticed. But I think about something else, actually. Uh, the philosophy that I've always loved, and I'm going to pronounce this wrong, so I apologize, uh, Matryoshka brains. Mm -hmm is that, and that's Kardashev level two, that civilizations get so advanced and they focus not on expanding physically and expanding in space and expanding their reach by planting flags in new places, but grow their cognition, grow their ability to think, they grow their brain, they grow their intellect. Um, and I, I feel like in the last few years, we've seen a massive trend that maybe this is the thing that happens and that we do grow our intellect and we grow the, the intellect of the species by AI and advanced tools and, and as a society can just get smart enough that we don't need to go plant those flags everywhere.
And so the Matryoshka brain is uh, a Dyson sphere where a civilization has covered the entire sun in essentially solar panels or collects its light in some way and uses all of that power to power intelligence, to power computers and to power brains. And I think we're away from that, a ways away from that, but maybe AI and fusion together gets you actually along that path sooner. And uh, I'm, I'm excited by that outcome of the Fermi paradox. And then at that point, those civilizations have a, a star that you can't find anymore because it's all covered and are there thinking and growing their intellects rather than actually having to physically expand. Yeah, exploring and expanding in the realm of uh, cognition and consciousness versus in the realm of space and time. As we, we uh, 21st century colonizer humans uh, think like maybe 22nd century humans will be uh, thinking fundamentally differently. Yeah, that's a beautiful, beautiful vision of the future. Uh, speaking of beauty, you've been doing a lot of really interesting things in a lot of interesting disciplines. What to you is uh, a ridiculous question? Is the most beautiful idea in physics and um, nuclear engineering? in uh, nuclear fusion and power plants what what ideas you just step back are and are in awe of i'm continuously in awe that it works <laughs> yeah and, and i know i know that that sounds a little silly to say um but the more that i learned in my career around the balance of exactly the right temperatures where life works, exactly the right balance between the electromagnetic force and the strong force. Th those are things that it's hard to imagine are accidental. And, um, and so we talk about how beautiful nature is, but then you look at what each of the leaves on the tree really is and each of the cells and each of the atoms and each of the quantum substructure of that atom and uh i'm just i'm i'm all amazed that all the pieces come together we humans are somehow able to find that perfect balance where it just works just works last minute sometimes but it does work <laughs> the kind of deadlines you're operating the your uh the, the group of brilliant people that you're working with are operating under is just, um, it stresses me out. <laughs> but it excites me. So I'm uh, deeply grateful that you're doing this work. You're one of the people building an exciting future. So thank you for doing that. And uh, thank you so much for talking today. Thank you very much. It's been fun.